the acute healthcare environment in the hospital is so controlled and it has to be for patients' well-being. It's really good as a counterbalance to have something like the arts to bring in the humanity side. My name is Caroline Schofield and I work as a visual artist. So the Irish Hospice set up this project of an artist coming in, working end of life in an acute hospital. We set up a whole referral process. All of the palliative care team and other consultants could refer a patient that would be suitable. Just kind of put a thought in my head to highlight patients that I could potentially think of in the future. I didn't think it'd be like a week later that I'd actually find someone suitable for it. Um, so that kind of just got the ball rolling to flagging patients in my own mind. So when I'm out seeing them on the wards that I suppose I could kind of earmark it and mention it to them before actually going ahead and doing referrals. How to get into those wards, how to get people to know I was around. And I suppose trust as well, that everybody trusted what was going to happen and that I wasn't going to go in and do something mad. Um, so yeah, that, that was kind of the start. So I, I set up an art pack, so just a sketchbook, pencils, um, some images from the hospital collection that I bring in with me. Um, so at least I have something that I can hand over. But usually it's just a conversation to start with, um, to find out just simple questions about, have you ever done any art? Have you any interest? Um, have you been to galleries? We have a look at the pictures. Um, and what's really lovely about, the, about what happens is that often they start um, telling me image, imagery that they like. And that for me, immediately, that's like a spark. And I think that's kind of important as well, that like you're flexible, there's lots of laughter in the room. So the work can develop into things like, um, so music, dancing, uh, singing, but painting, printing, um, clay. We did lots of work around that too. It improves the culture of the hospital. It gets us all talking. Caroline's been to Grand Rounds, she's been to the palliative care um, team. She's connecting all the disciplines because it's not just nurses and doctors, it's everybody from um, the household staff, the catering staff, and you know, there's a, a gentleman in one of the wards and he handed out all his pictures to the staff that are kind to him and look after him and they have a piece and he's, you know, he has now died and they have that lovely memory of him. So it creates memories. The rooms are quite blank um, and, you know, you can disrupt that room by one image, just one, one image that goes up and then suddenly people notice like the mining images or the animal images or, you know, flowers or, or a place um, that can go up on the wall and it disrupts it for people coming in and for the patient that they suddenly have something that they like and they chose. Staff come up to me and they say, oh, we saw that artwork in somebody's room. They're having conversations. They're, um, like one particular woman, she started to make work for the staff. Um, and the staff were coming in and going, oh, will you draw me something? One patient, she was really ill. Um, she was in the hospital for a long, long time and moving around wards all the time. And she started to do artwork and she was just so happy. I mean, and one of her comments is, uh, you're like a present when you come in to me. But it started to change how she saw herself as not being a patient, but actually, I'm, I'm, I actually can create, you know, I can make paintings. Um, and also, when the doctors came in to talk to her, the first thing they, she would say to them is, look at my artwork, you know. There was one particular patient who got involved, and he really benefited from it. He would look forward to her visit every day. He, he would know when she was coming. Um, and then after participating in doing art, he would actually share it with staff, so he was much more engaged with staff. It resulted in more communication, better communication with staff too, and I suppose an improved stay for him. For us it's all about the, the process and trying to make people better. Um, but for people who come in, you can feel that they're, they're completely at sea. You know, they've lost who they are. Suddenly they're not in control. And so what, what, I, what, I, what I've seen for the benefit is that suddenly someone reaches out to them somebody who's not a, a health person so they're getting instructions from people all day long they're kind of frozen to the bed hoping things will get better and suddenly somebody comes in and, and really doesn't want to know about their illness or how they're doing but just wants to know how are you coping as a person and you know if you're if you can't verbalize it well let's here's a method where we can try and bring forward something bring forward your emotions and I have seen Caroline work on the ward 
with one or two patients who were you know here with multiple medical issues multiple psychological issues and you've seen them engage with her and you've seen them smiling and you know you've seen them suddenly find themselves again as people and you know we we try have to remind the doctors we have to remind the doctors that look look what this person is doing you know it's not just about their blood pressure or the temperature it actually is about them as a person and you know, we do try and teach our doctors that you're seeing someone in bed, but actually they have a whole story. And even just to go in and see in the room that you see somebody doing, you know, drawing their pictures or even even that lady, she came in just for today, but she had her notebook and she had, she said had her black and white pencil doing some some drawings, even though she was very, very ill, but she was still enjoying that and the conversation, even the distraction away from her sickness. Art can be anything. And that's, that was the wonderful thing about Caroline, was that she adapted her, um, how she used art with every patient. So it wasn't that every patient was able to draw, so they discussed images. And Caroline had a lovely pack where she had just images that started conversations. And sometimes what they just wanted was um, to talk. Within my role, a lot of patients, um, I suppose might lose the use of, of their hands maybe due to certain medical conditions so it was amazing actually Caroline was able to adapt the, the art to the patient's needs so she was able to um, do art with a patient of mine through putting the paintbrush in his mouth so it was really inclusive um, and it was a real I suppose eye opener it gave the patient a, a kind of a sense of worth, a bit of self esteem um, and it was a really good social kind of uh, interaction. So I knew the patient quite well, but there was things that uh, Caroline spoke to him about that I didn't know about him at all. And there was pictures up in the room. So that was a really lovely way to bring that conversation, make the treatment more personal to the patient. To have somebody else who doesn't come from the medical side is definitely what a lot of people need. They're just sick of teams and doctors and physios and everyone coming in at them. That someone who's even dressed not in a uniform must be refreshing someone like that come into them. So to have that in the toolbox to have, it's a great thing to have. Yeah. All the moments that I'm there for and things that happen and that people will never know about, like one-to-one -one things that are said are, are just the laughter. But wh whatever it is about art is that it, um, it just what it brings up or what the person finds out. Like somebody said to me the other day about we, we'd worked together and he was walking down the ward with me afterwards and he goes, it wasn't good, but it was amazing. In that his work wasn't good, but the experience was amazing. Um, and what we talked about on that time out for him. It showed us what's important. That's what I think Dame Cecily Saunders, the founder of the modern hospice movement, uh, encapsulated very well, that you can live well um, right to the end. You know, we'll allow you to die peacefully, but you can live well up to the end. And, um, and that's, that has shown us that that can be achieved very simply. You know, it's not, it doesn't have to be big gestures, it's small little things that can make a major ripple effect. And I think that, is, that has happened here in St. Luke's.